Trump Media and Technology Group. So one of the newest entries to the public markets. I just started trading via a SPAC transaction um, March 26. So only uh, less than two weeks ago, as a matter of fact. So Trump Media and Technology. Well, this is Trump's media and technology company. The, the sole asset is Truth Social, Truth Social which is Donald Trump's um, private, essentially his private social media platform. After he got banned from several platforms um, in 2020, he made the move, I believe it was in 2022 that it was launched to um, have his own platform, which he wanted to market towards you know, more conservative people or people that were in his uh, sphere of influence, essentially and wanted to hear what he had to say. So uh, as I said, they just became public in March uh, via SPAC transaction trading right now under the symbol DJT on the NASDAQ exchange stock price of 36.40. It's a $5 billion market cap. Uh, quite a wild ride so far. So <clears throat> March 26th, they start trading. They did a merger with Digital Acquisition Corp, which was a SPAC. Um, so we've talked about SPACs before. This is just basically an easier way for a lot of companies to go public um, as opposed to doing a traditional IPO. Um, generally speaking, we find that most of the companies that use the SPAC structure aren't necessarily the highest quality businesses. That's why they need to use it. Of course, that's not always the case, um, but it generally tends to be a higher risk way of, of investing. Um, now, right after it started trading on the first day, the stock price shot up, shot up over 50%. And the company reached a valuation of about $8 billion. Uh, since then, it's pretty much been straight down, uh, dropping from a price of about $65 down to about $36 in change today. So what's going on here? Well, you know, the first thing that we always like to do when we're looking at a business is we want to take a look at the financial performance of this company. Um, as I said, it was it, it, it had hit a, a $8 billion valuation market value um, shortly after trading right now it's it's down around five billion so the company did on april 1st issue its its financial statements for the 12-month period of 2023 so this is for trump media and technology group um, not for the spac uh, and the company trump media and technology reported revenue of 4.1 million dollars for the year so 4.1 million that's primarily from advertising revenue from the Truth Social platform. Truth Social is really the only asset um, of the company right now. So 4.1 million in revenue for the year and a net loss of just under $60 million. So $58 million net loss for the year. So uh, minimal revenue there, uh, quite a bit of uh, cash burn. Now, just looking at the balance sheet, taking a look at what... Uh, what the company has in terms of assets and liabilities. So they ended the year with cash of about $2.6 million. And the company does have debt. There's convertible promissory notes. Uh, there's long-term uh, lease liability convertible promissory notes are about $42 million. In total, you're, you're looking at about $45 million in debt and then negative shareholder equity of $66 million. So financially, the stock leaves a lot to be desired. But really, you know, we want to take a look at True Social and just get a sense of what is the value of this social media platform. Um, so one of the best ways to do this is to compare it against another social media uh, platform that, you know, is similar size. So we've decided to pick Reddit. Um, Reddit has a, a market capitalization of $7.3 billion. Um, so fairly similar to... to to Trump's company right now, Trump Media, which is $5 billion. Um, when the When Trump's company first started trading, uh, as I said, it was up around $8 billion. So they were, they were almost on par at that point in time in terms of market capitalization. So how do these two social media platforms really compare? Well, one way that we would look at, at a social media platform is based on monthly active users. Now, True Social actually doesn't report their active users or their monthly active users, um, which is unusual for a social media company. That's generally a pretty key metric. Um, but doing the research that I've looked, that I've done, there's a range of, of estimated monthly active users for True Social. And this ranges between about 600,000 to, to 2 million. Now compare that to Reddit, 
uh, just under 870 million monthly active users. Uh, revenue for True Social, as I said, 2023, 4.1 million compared to Reddit of 850 million. So if we were to look at this uh, on a price to sales valuation metric, True Social is trading at a whopping valuation of almost 1,200 times sales. So this is this is an insane valuation if we were in fact to value it on revenue, which clearly it is not being valued on right now. Now let's compare that to Reddit, nine times sales. Um, if we were to look at say Meta, Facebook, they're about 10 times sales. So that's generally a valuation multiple based on sales that we would wanna see. Uh, 1,200 times is just absolutely astronomical. Now, another way that I've done evaluation here is price to active monthly user. So for every active monthly monthly user, you're essentially with True Social paying about $3,850. Now compare that to Reddit, about $8.40. $8 um, so obviously, you know, something is going on here. Uh, $5 billion market cap based on you know, the, the size of the, the platform, True Social, the financial performance, it's really confusing as to like what would justify evaluation at this level. So if I'm going to look at this just purely on a financial valuation basis, I would say that Trump Media and Technology is a complete and utter dumpster fire. I mean, there is almost no value in terms of um, financial performance to be had there. So um, what, what, it, what is going on there? What's, what's happening that is justifying this $5 billion market capitalization right now? Market capitalization that was very recently uh, $8 billion. Now, the easy answer here would just be like, well, Donald Trump has a cult-like following, right? So all of his followers see that he now has a public company. They're rushing out to to buy shares in that company to prop that that share price up. I mean, really, True Social has been around for you know year and a half to two years now, so it's not like they can you can really expect any organic uh, explosive growth in the user base based on you know normal conditions right right now. So one would think that it's it's people that love Donald Trump that are running there and buying the stock, and I definitely think that there is an element of that, but I also think that it goes beyond that, right? So Donald Trump is a Republican nominee, right? So what actually happens if he is elected president, right? He's, he's not on Twitter. He's not on Facebook. He's not on any of the other social media platforms. He just posts on True Social, okay? And I'm not going to get into the whole polls and like what, what is the likelihood that he will be successfully elected president. But I would say that in almost any presidential cycle, you know, the, the percentage that it goes to either candidate isn't that far from 50-50, right? So maybe it's like 60-40, um, but nobody can say that it is or isn't going to happen. It usually to me is a bit of a toss up. So what happens if he is actually successfully elected president? That means that he is potentially going to be doing all of his social media communication through to true social, right? So anybody that wants to follow what the president of the United States is saying on social media is going to have to use true social. That includes people in the United States, foreign dignitaries, press. Um, you could imagine the user base would absolutely explode in that situation. And you could take it further. I mean, as president, he may dictate that, you know, the executive branch of the US government has to use true social as as a social media platform right and he may say that you know other platforms like twitter and tiktok are you know not um going to be used by the u.s government now i'm not sure if it would go that far um but you could even take it further and say that he could use the office of the president to attack other social media companies like facebook that he certainly does not like now i know twitter he is allowed back on so he is not banned from Twitter anymore. He has chosen not to go back on Twitter, I believe because he's contractually obligated to just focus on true social. But if he wants to use the office of the presidency, he could essentially do his best to handicap other social media companies for the benefit of his own, right? Now, some people will say, well, wouldn't that be like a massive misuse of power and conflict of interest? And the answer is yes, it absolutely would, which in no way would stop him from doing it. Um, so this is the thing. I think that some people are actually looking at this company um, based on the speculative upside if he is elected president. And maybe like maybe the chances 
of him being elected. I mean, I'm not going to get into the stats. Maybe they're 50, 40, 30%. They're not zero, right? They're not 10%. They're probably not 20%. They're probably better than that. And if that happens, you know, you could actually see this thing move up. Now, would I suggest buying it? Absolutely not. I think, as I said, it is a complete dumpster fire of a company when you look at the financials, particularly compared to the market valuation right now. I would not go close to it. If he loses the election, I think this thing is going down like 95% plus the day after. It's probably going to move up and down a lot through the election cycle based on what the um, likelihood is at the time that people think of him actually getting elected. But um, I wouldn't short it either um, because it actually makes sense from a very speculative perspective why some people would actually be buying it. So uh, that's my analysis. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah. So I actually brought up to Brett today because I was like, dang it, I should have shorted it. You know, that's what I said to him. And he said, well, you actually have to look a little bit deeper, Brennan, because um, like, like, for example, if you want to short a stock, like the short seller needs to borrow the stock from an existing long only investor. Um, and where like for like normally um, you might be charged, you know, a few annualized percentage points. Uh, it's normally not even that. Well, that exactly. Is- to be honest, I'm actually reading a Forbes article right here in front of me, uh, which I should probably disclose that. Um, but, you know, that's what they're saying here is, you know, generally it's a, a few an- annualized percentage points. But and Brett brought this forward to me, which I didn't know. Uh, the cost to borrow Trump media is currently set at an annualized rate of 550 percent for existing short sellers. And according to short sale data provided by uh, S3 partners, new short sellers need to pay as much as 900% annualized interest rate, uh, which is a new record to short the stock. So So that means a lot of people are are shorting the stock. That means there's high demand to short. Exactly. And this is, you know, like the Forbes article is saying here, this implies that for a new short seller, the stock would have to drop by about two and a half percent per day just to break even. Mm-hmm. So again, like you guys said, yeah, of course, you know, yeah, there's not I, many short shares out there. Another way to look at it is I I actually have the numbers up. It's right now you're paying 267% uh, interest rate, but that fluctuates a lot. Yeah. And right now, outstanding, this is off interactive brokers. There's around 50,000 shares available to short. Yeah. There's 133 million shares currently in their float. And normally when a company has that amount of float, unless it's a heavily shorted stock like this, you'll see probably 10, 20% at least available short at any time. And if the short interest rate starts to go up, you'll normally see more become available short because people will actually buy a long position just to lend it out when it is like this. So you do get these big fluctuations just because of the short market dynamics. And that could be what you're seeing over the past week as well, past just initial speculation. But no, yeah. it's a so great just point. generally speaking, I mean, I'm 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 far from an expert on the mechanics of shorting because I generally just think that shorting is a stupid proposition, just mm-hmm. as a general rule of investing. I mean, yeah. when you're going long a stock, your upside theoretically is unlimited. You can make 100 percent, 200 percent, or more. I mean, we've seen companies, you know, Hammond Power up. What is it up? Probably about sixteen thousand percent right now. Right? Yeah, it's 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 the upside is unlimited. Whereas when you're shorting a stock, the downside is limited to 100% less whatever you pay in fees, right? So it's just, there's an asymmetry in terms of, of risk return there. So it's not, uh, it's, not a, it's not a proposition that I think is fair. And And as well, just on that is you might be thinking, oh, well, then I'll use options. That high interest rate is baked into the option mm-hmm. prices as well, just so you are aware. It's not a one time, it's not a get out of jail free card when you're buying options compared to uh, just direct short selling. We baked into it to some degree. It's not always one to one, and people will actually arbitrage that. Yeah. But it's not a simple solution that's catch all by any means. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. 